Okay, so one thing that I would like to do next is I would like to kind of um, uh, refactor this stuff a little bit. So we're going to be working on the timeline activity next, right? And we're going to need to read the data from the database. Um, and this guy is saving the data in the database. So what it sounds to me like is that there's some repetition there in the, the amount of work, right? In both cases, we need to open up the database. Um, and we need to um, basically worry about all the database related stuff um, and we also talked about that yesterday briefly how too much of the system right now knows about the database intricacies right so we may not like that because um, you kind of want to try to keep things loosely coupled in other words abstracted from an one another so that if we do not like SQLite database or something you know for whatever reason we can at some point get rid of it and so forth we don't have it yet. We're about to, right? We don't have a petition yet. We're about to. But think about what is the what is going to be the job of the timeline activity. This is the guy that actually shows us everything that we have. So this is going to be the guy that, um, if you remember my sample app that I have. Let me see if I have it running. Still, uh, guess what? It's not running. So let me uh, go to my sample. Uh, so this is the timeline activity that we are about to start working on. So guess what? This guy is reading data fr from the database, right? So it's doing this, reading it. So it needs to also get a DB helper, open it up, say blah, 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 right? So there's a lot of work there. So what I would like to do is I would like to refactor it now. And it's a good way to sort of pick up, um, you know, pick up where we left off yesterday, just to kind of like refresh all that. And so forth. So uh, what I'm proposing is to create a um, a class uh, that's going to be responsible for everything data, right? And we're going to hang that class off of the application, so it's going to be readily available to the rest of our system. Make sense? So I'm going to call this class status data, just because that's what we're saving. Status data, you know, co corresponds to status database, right? So, and we're going to hang it off of the, the application eventually. So we're going to do two things. We're going to start by, so I'm going to close all this for now. So we're going to create a new, uh, new class. So, so right click, so basically right click on your package, right? Um, before I just do that, I want to make sure that I actually uh, did uh, create a new copy of Yamba for you guys yesterday. One, two, and yesterday was three, right? Compress. So I wanna I wanna have it incremental so that you guys know that uh, which zip file corresponds to what. Okay. So uh, right click new and uh, Java class, and I'm gonna call it status data since it's Java. It's gonna be capital S capital D, right? Bam! There it is. Um, and status data right now is going to be just a plain Java object, right? It's not subclassing anything special. Um, it's going to uh, know about the context, so it's going to need a context. So I'm going to um, define uh, my standard variable, so private static final string tag, right? Remember how we always do that? Status data dot class dot get simple name um, and I'm going to define uh, context so context context so just that we have it and I'm gonna create a constructor public status data So, so far, I'm just kind of creating a shell, right? It doesn't really do much. Um, 
My goal is that this status data is going to have all our data related functionality, right? And it's going to be the only one that actually uses uh, data uh, DB helper, right? So it's going to have a DB helper. So I'm going to create DB helper, DB helper as a, uh, you know, as a relation, uh, as an object. And, uh, and when we create the new uh, status data, we're going to create DB helper, his new DB helper, this, uh, sorry, not this, but context. So we're going to pass the context into it because that's what we need it for. So far, so good. So, um, just to kind of um, think about this, so if DB Helper is only going to be used by status data, does it make sense to keep DB Helper as a separate class? Yeah, this is the kind of situation where you may want to move DB Helper into, uh, make it an inner class. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut or copy the entire DB Helper. So, basically, all this stuff that we did, right? And I'm going to put it inside of, of, uh, of this class um, status data, organize imports. Let's see what the error is. Um, so I have an error right here. Um, I'm sorry? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. It should be a private class, right? Can you copy the whole thing? Yeah, so I copied basically everything inside of the DB helper. So, you know, minus the imports because you're going to do organized imports in the other one, right? Make sense? Shouldn't we be using the context from the state of data class instead of declaring another context inside? Uh, we're not defining a new context. We're just defining a reference to a context. So a context is going to get passed into it. Sorry. In this guy, so the context is going to get passed into status data, and we're just passing it. Oh, as a ma oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. So this now we have it. Yes, yeah. So this becomes a good point. So this becomes, yeah. So we don't actually need uh, this anymore because context is now known inside of of uh, of status data. Yes, good point. So we don't need the multiple co version um, in, uh, variables pointing to a context. Right. So DB Helper can now use the context that was defined at the le level of status data. But it's uh, reverse of refactoring, right? This case, we are bringing in. We could have added some functionality in DB Helper, like maybe get data or something like that. that yeah. Is, uh, so, yeah, we're gonna add that functionality to deal with data, uh, to to status data, right? Uh, but DB Helper is gonna be helping status data to complete that functionality. So, as opposed to making, D see, DB Helper is really responsible for opening and closing the database. Oh, it's not for querying and... Uh, yeah, certain. so we're making status data be responsible for that. So status data is going to be responsible for all the data-related data functionality, and it's using the... Right? So the structure is going to be like this. So it's going to be status data, right? And status data has a DB helper. So DB 
Kelper, right? So it uses DB Kelper and then provides all the all the um, functionality. And then it's going to be Yamba application that has uh, status data. Make sense? So the status data so we'll have two uh, classes or two uh, two entities mainly for database functionality. One is DB helper, which is only used for creating and uh, uh, initializing the database. And for all the other data functions, let's say if anything else comes or any other view, we add data on which needs insert or view or fetch query that will use status data for that. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so basically, status. It was, but we, at the outside world, is only going to be concerned with status data. Okay. It doesn't care that the status data internally uses database. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, um, so with that, we now. So we now have basically have a simpler. Um, we have something called status data that we're going to be using. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to hang status data off of the application, Yamba application, so that it's available to everyone, right? So I'm going to make private. Um, actually, I don't need. To, I'm not going to make it private. I'll say status data, sta status data. And then in on create. We're going to create status data. So status data is new status data. And we pass this into it. So it's, it's, uh, the status data has the context. So we basically declare it as part of the Yamba application. And we, need, oops, and we initialize it here. So those, those two lines are new, basically in Yamba application. So far, so good. So, so, we, so again, we just basically are hanging. Um, so it's Yamba application that has a status data. So this is a has a relationship. So this is status data, right? So from in the future, we're just going to be able to ask anywhere in the system for Yamba application status data. So anywhere in our system, we now have access to status data. Right? What is the reason for passing the context? What is the reason for passing a context? Context is sort of a, um, gives... A, See, remember how we said our application is really everything here, right? So this is everything is application. Um, so application sort of knows, or bits and pieces of application know who they belong to based on their context. So the context for an application decides on everything from like which process it belongs to, what file system it has, what resources it's got access to, and so forth. So it's a sort of like an abstract concept that gives you, um, you know, gives you your membership in the club, right? Gives you context for your code. So uh, an activity doesn't know who it belongs to other than what the context that it has. By inheriting from context, it knows which app it's part of and so on. So, so activities, services, application, they're all subclasses, they're all children of context. Right? Can you share one activity between two applications? Not really. I mean, you can copy your class from one and you have two copies of classes, but they're going to belong to their two different contexts. Yeah. What's possible to do is it's possible to share 
um, um, to have multiple applications share the same context. That's possible to do. So that means that you have uh, both apps signed with the same key, belong to the same package, and then they can share the context. In other words, you can have two applications like that, that for example, share the same file, stru file structure, the private file system, right? Yeah. Okay, so now that... Sorry, any, any other questions? But they would still have to wait. Uh, yeah, you would have two, se two uh, separate APKs that share the same contextual stuff, like the process ID and the, um, and the file system. Okay, so if I look at how we use database uh, in our updater service, remember I said this is not very the efficient code. We like here open the database, we created the content values, and then we close the database. I would like to have this responsibility uh, shifted now to status data because I would like status data to be responsible for everything database related so uh, so what what, what uh, so basically what we're doing is we are hiding the information about how insert happens what algorithm we're looking using for you know when problems happen all that stuff we're putting now in status data right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create in status data, uh, a new method uh, called, uh, uh, I'll push, I'm going to push the DB helper lower. Um, let me just kind of document it. So, uh, class to help open create, open, uh, uh, open, create, up, upgrade database. Okay. So, I'm going to push the responsibility uh uh, I'm gonna push the uh, you know DB helper lower. Um, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna create a uh, public uh, public insert. I don't know if it's gonna be an int. For now, I'll just return void. We may change that later on. Content values um, values. And so this is going to be responsible for inserting into uh, the database. So this is going to be our code that inserts into the database. Okay. Now the question is, do this again like this. Um, Into. Um, the, the question is, um, you know, I said I'm trying to kind of not explain, not, not have to show the world that we're using something that's database specific, right? So, um, you know, so we're trying to hide the fact that we're using DB and all that from the outside stuff and we want to package all that inside of status data. Now the question is, what about content values? I'm using this thing called content values. Um, isn't that a database related thing? Because we introduced it as part of the database. Yeah, so that's a good point. So uh, content values, as you can see from its package where it belongs to, come on mouse, show, it's part of Android content content values. In other words, it's bigger than the database. It's, it goes beyond database. Somebody was asking yesterday about it. Um, I think you were saying that why, why does it say here if you're using content providers, don't use anything from the database package? Well, that's why, because we are abstracting. Um, if, we, if we are using the data in a more generic way, we don't want to tell the world, we don't even want to include database related stuff. Right, so that's what I'm kind of trying to point out. That content values really has nothing to do with the with the database. It's just a very generic name value pair table. It's a map. Essentially, it's a map, and it goes beyond how it's implemented. It could be used for database purposes, but it could be used for other purposes as well. So that functionality now that we had here, you know, sorry. So this open database stuff, I'm going to cut, uh, let me, you know what, I'm going to copy it for now. And later on, I'm going to go back here and yank 
bunch of stuff out, right? But uh, so, but that that functionality that we have here, um, I'm gonna basically copy in here. So we open the database, right? We um, insert into the database. So I'm gonna copy it for now. So we have duplicates, right? And then I'm gonna close the database. Um, except that I don't need to be uh, opening and closing DB Helper because DB Helper is something that we already created globally, right? For status data. So D DB Helper in itself is not um, holding any resource. Its job is just to create a database if one doesn't exist, right? It's what what is holding a resource is get writable database. That's why we wanna undo whatever we do here right so we are basically opening closing database right within this block right we get writable database and we close writable database right here so um so what what it means to get instance of Right. So DB Helper is um, I, I guess I should really rename it at some point to DB Open Helper. So its job is to open up a database. Um, but let me rephrase that. It opens up a database, not a data, not the actual database uh, connection. connection. Yeah. Um, so. It, it, let's say it like this, it opens up the connection to the database server, but quote-unquote server, because it's not a server, right? Um, so it provides connectivity to that mechanism, but it's the actual get writable database that actually gives you a, a connection, and it gives you a, in this ca case, means that you, can, you are the only one who can write to it at the time, so it actually locks the resource. Yeah. So in other words, DB Helper um, can live for a much longer lifetime. Like opening up a DB Helper, you can do it when the phone boots and never close it until the phone shuts down. And that's fine. It's not holding any, re any valuable resource other than a little bit of memory. DB writable, Get Writable Database actually opens up a database for, for a while, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so DB what are the other methods in SQL like open helper that implement rather than on create? Uh, well, it's you, so you can put... You, yeah, so if I put my mouse here and I go source, override implement methods, Eclipse should be uh, smart enough to show us what options we have. So close, get readable, get writable, and open. So you can do something on open, so and something on close if you wanted to. And get readable, get writable database, you can override them. But we don't override it, we actually use it. So we use it here, yeah. When you get a writable database, you what? Yes. Yes, exactly. You open it for writing, and you get exclusive lock to it. So is everyone now um, okay with our new insert method? Right. So are you creating a DB connection? Is that is that equivalent to like a DB connection now with SQLite database? Yeah, so the SQLite database is a connection to an actual database, yes. So now, why do I have it here? Yeah, so we we now have a bunch of duplicates. So now we're going to go into like trimming mode, right? We're going to cut out a bunch of stuff. So 
good point so I'm going to go now to the service and all this stuff that we had to open up the database okay gone all the stuff that we had to close the database likewise gone and now to save something into a database okay gone so so how we're gonna save this stuff well we need access to our Yamba application which is this is how we get our Yamba application right um, and then status data and then insert but so now you know since I have this Yamba application um, all over the place what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually define it uh, I'm gonna define it like uh, what do we want to define it we can define it in constructor I can say um, Yamba application Yamba just to make it shorter okay uh, sorry uh, and like that okay and then I'm just gonna say uh, Yamba Yamba is that right just I'm shortening it a little bit right and then I'm gonna replace this with Yamba to make it shorter as well so Yamba get weather all right gets the latest Twitter and then we do to Twitter update okay so similarly uh, and now I, I could actually make this even shorter so I'm gonna replace that like that so I don't even need the object weather right so Yamba get Twitter and again friends timeline right so just update, um, update class was the thread Updated class is our separate thread, which we create when services started and stopped, right? Yeah. And now, um, when I insert, insert, so it's not correct to say insert into database because we don't know it's database. We just say insert data, right? And I'm simply going to say um, yam, yam ba dot stat data dot insert values right so this is why I simplified stuff so that's what I mean by refactoring it I now outsource the job of dealing with saving data to some other object which is hanging off of a Yamba application which is readily available to us right throughout the system um, and so I say insert in there Yeah, so I just defined it here uh, just to save myself typing, but it's this well-known stuff, right? Get get application, we cast it to Yamba application, right? Yeah. And I just defined it global to my... Uh, to, yeah. Mm -hmm. We could have made it global to the entire um, updater service, not just the updater class. But um, yeah, I don't know. Just a your opinion on this design idea. Uh, right now, we scroll along a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're still using the um, columns fields to find in the server. Since the data sample was pulled into a private class of that's right. status data, let's say we would have deleted the data sample. So my question is this, because um, this is what I'm trying to figure out what I should do here. Those constants, put them at the level of status data because it seems like this columns, you know, appropriate for status data. Or if you bury them inside of database helper, which is private inside of status data, we'd have to make the data sample private. So yeah, so that. that's a great point. So the point is, like, we're trying really hard to get rid of any reference to the database-related stuff in updater service, or for that matter, the rest of the system. We don't want the rest of the system to know about the database because you guys asked yesterday you wanted to potentially change to some other database system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So your point is great. It's like, hey, but you're referring to db helper all over the place and the only reason why this even compiles is because i have a duplicate db helper here because remember the one that we uh, moved to the, uh, to here is now private 
right? So I'm about to delete this. This is going to go away, and this is not going to compile, right? So that's a great point. What do we do? Well, we could, you know, one option is to make uh, make DB helper not private and then do status data. So yamba dot status data dot uh, DB helper dot blah. But that makes no sense. What makes more sense is to move some of this stuff that is actually relevant to uh, the rest of the system outside. And I'm actually, I could pick all of them, but since I'm only picking the ones that actually are shared by the larger, you know, group. So I'm going to Cut that out. So why not make the status as the instead of the uh, values? So when you get the status list, you just pass the status as the values. Um, that's a good point. So let me just uh, let me just move this here. Okay. So I move these variables here, the, the 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 database columns. Okay. I'll get back to your point. Um, okay, so so that's um, so that's here, and um, and then just to finish the ref refactoring, but I'm not I'm I'm gonna get back to your point. It's a really good point. So now this is not DB helper we're referring to, but status data, right? Right. You meant start start. Yeah, just define that. This is just to save me from typing. You can just basically refer to this because that's how we get the reference to the application. But. Mm -hmm. So DB helper now belongs solely to database uh, to status data. Mm -hmm. We're about to delete it from here. Yeah, so I define DB helper here, right in the constructor, and I, I create an instance of it right when status data is created. So it's kind of like it's a built-in component of status data. That's what DB Helper is, and and it's defined lower here as as a private class, right? As a matter of fact, let's go now and delete DB Helper, and it's gonna let's see what all the other problems that generates, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the DB Helper class from the file system altogether. Because right now we have two. We have the one that we moved as an inner class privately, and then we have the other ones. And so now it's a mixed bag of what's referring to what. So I'm going to get rid of this. And Eclipse automatically recompiles everything. And I guess everything just compiles. So it's good. Okay. Uh, status data, yeah. So status data now, that's where the DB helper is. So status data now ho uh, houses the the uh, the variable, the names of the columns, right? Um, and Right, so the status data houses the name of, names of the columns, and um, and then the updater service is basically referring to those status data variables. Okay, um, now is everyone good with that so far? Which one? So status data. So we move the functionality for inserting into the database here to this guy. 
So now, uh, so here's a little bonus question for you guys. Back to the question. What, right now we said, we designed this status data to take content values and insert it. Well, what if we wanted to simplify this even further so that we're not even worried about content values, but we simply say, imagine that you can simply say insert into, uh, insert status. Imagine that you can do that. Of course, that doesn't work right now, right? So how would you outsource some of this functionality for converting into status data? That's what you were asking about, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'll give that to you guys as a bonus question. So try to do that. So in other words, what you want to do is, this now doesn't compile, right? But what I want to do is create a new version of, of, um, of this. Actually, let me do it like this. First, I'll define it. So public void insert, but as a, it, it, takes, it takes a status as the, uh, the data. Right, organize imports and import Twitter status because that's what status we're referring to. So this now needs to take this and insert it into the database. Okay, uh, inserts, inserts into database, and the only difference is that uh, is um, status data as provided by online service. So that's now what we want to uh, insert, right? So I'll give you, I'll give you a second to do that to update it. Okay, um, you can go from there. So did anybody did make this change? Cre create this method. So basically, all I need to do is I need to um, move the responsibility now for creating new values. So I'm gonna, co I'm gonna copy it first and then I'll remove it, right? So it's easier for you to visualize. So now this guy creates new values. This guy uh, copies the values from one oops from one to the other, right? And then this guy is simply gonna call in so this dot insert values, right? So right so it's well, no, the job of this guy is to insert one status at a time. So it's basically, see, as opposed to, we have two versions now of insert. We have the one that takes content values and inserts them into a database. We have another version which takes status, converts the status to content values, then calls the other guy, right? So leverages the other guy. So now you have just two different, you know, function insert, right? So it's, you have more, a richer API in, in a way, right? And so now I can simplify even further my service to, to yank this stuff out, yank this stuff out, and I simply say insert the data, Yamba status data, insert status. And all of this is actually irrelevant. So see how, how much simpler my service now is, right? And so it doesn't even know about database, doesn't even know about content values. I mean, that wasn't a big deal. So that, that was just really an extra. But basically, we get status from Twitter, we loop through it, and for each one we insert it into a database. That's it. How many maximum entries you can have in a database? Um, it really depends. Um, I mean, it, there's no real re limit. Like how big can your database grow? So database can become bigger and bigger. Yeah, I mean, it's there, there's a limit on the entire SD card. Uh, I mean, not SD card, but the data partition. But I don't know exactly what that is, and I don't need, I don't think we you know we're not gonna at this rate we are only growing up to twenty per per twenty four hours, right? So we're not going to really grow, uh, you know, 20 records per 24 hours. Let's say you can have 10 million records, right, or, you know, 100 calculator, right? So let's say that's, uh, that's 10,000, 10 million divided by 20. So, so this many days, um, so 
we have about uh, you know one one thousand uh, in three hundred years before we have a problem. So I wouldn't worry about that. What, what did you deem a problem? What is the size you thought was a problem? I, I picked ten thousand uh, ten million records as a I mean But is there like a space place where you can define what the maximum record you want to teach is? Yeah, is that, like you're purging, you're DB purging, you have to take care of all the stuff here or is that the system? Uh, the system yeah, there's a system that, that yeah. takes care of. And you know what you could also do? I mean, what you could also do is you could purge the data as part of the upgrade to the, 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 the data, the, the release. So every, you know, assuming that users use your app, they're going to want to upgrade your app, right? So whenever you release an upgrade of the app, you can have change the schema to activate on, on upgrade and simply non-upgrade purge the, the, you know, the, the oldest million records or something like that. Or the opposite, keep the youngest million records or something. And there should be plenty. But we can also, if you want, we can easily add a purge button. Right? Let's, um, let's do that as, an ex, uh, as a little bonus. Actually, that's a great idea. So just to, to, to demonstrate now that our uh, our what we just did is very useful okay so you guys so just to kind of illustrate you know we it sounds like we did a lot of this back of flipping between different files and you know as and refactor it refactoring tends to be confusing to people observing it's usually obvious to me because I'm doing it I got it conceptually but the fact that I'm flipping between I'm like hey we're creating this new file and then we're hanging it off of this and now this file is using uh, this file via this file that that can get confusing I totally get that one that's why I try to avoid flipping too many screens and having too many things open at the same time but to demonstrate so is everyone good with this so far Are you compiling yeah compiles works no, I have, I'll pick it up Okay, so but so we are doing something that's sort of the same thing. So it's uh, so let's think about this. What if I want to provide a way to delete all the data? Okay, so how would you do that? Somebody tell me. Yeah. So all the data related stuff goes inside here. So you're saying have a another record um, another record called public void delete. Right, simple enough, right? And um, deletes all all the data. So you're saying in this method we're gonna delete all the data. So how do we uh, delete all the data? Yeah. So we, we yeah. So it's gonna be we're gonna need to open the database. I know that, and we're gonna open it for writing, right? We're gonna open the database. And I know I'm going to also need to close the database. I'm going to copy, paste, open, close. Okay. So for all these, you're going to basically do open, close the database, right? Sorry, question? Um, yeah, because we have a function called insert, right? And there you open and close it. So why don't we just take that out and just call it a, you know, an initiate of the database, right? Because once you have it open, it's open until you close it, right? So you can do the opening once, closing once, and in between you can... Yeah, but yeah, you. I don't want to. Yes, I, yeah. I want to make it atomic, meaning I want to open, do the job, close it, and not keep the resource open. Don't keep it open. Yeah. Um, so th that would be more. Yeah, that would be more proper. I guess in some you know, sense, you know, when you have a database open and closed all the time, you can take like, more. Yeah. So that that comes down to a question: How many people are using this, and what's using this? And status data could be used by the service as well as by activity at the same time. So if the service has it open for in uh, forever uh, for writing, so it has a lock on it, and now we're trying to delete data from. Uh, we're going to have a conflict, right? So that's why I want to do it like this. So now I can delete the data and so that's going to be db dot and then i don't know let's look what do we have no oh, look there's something called delete table okay that's easy we got table so it's going to be the table is going to be uh db helper dot db helper dot table right and then the where clause and where arguments 
So this is the part, of, if you have a where, like if you want to say delete from blah, where, uh, you know, ID is greater than equal 47, right? But since we are not, we are deleting all the data, in other words, unconditionally, in other words, no condition, null, null. Okay, so there it is. So was it hard to implement a delete? I mean, it's a copy-paste from insert, and we just change instead of insert, we said delete, right? Like, I, I, would, I would expect you guys to be able to extrapolate this kind of information by now, right? Uh, update and query can't be much hard. Well, query has something special, but update, uh, I would expect you to be able to figure it out how to use it. So we're going to open up the database for writing db.update something something, and then db.close, right? Right, so that's your job next. So now when I click on a menu, I would like to have a button here that says purge. Okay? So uh, so you tell me. Menu.xml. So to add a menu, we're going to go to values. So not values, menu. Right? And we are going to add yet another item. And it's going to be just like any other item we added. So ID matters. So ID is going to purge. Okay. Um, then title. I'm going to create quickly a new title. So new string. Title purge. I'll say purge. Insert it. Okay. And then the hardest part is going to be the icon, right? So while you guys are entertained with adding the rest of the stuff, I'm going to really quickly look up my Android drawables on screamingpenguin.com, which you know gets you there. And I'm gonna search for something that says to, has to do with delete. Um, I'm looking for something that starts with IC menu, because then they're kind of uh, I, there. You go IC menu delete, because they're all consistently the same size. Okay, so back to this at Android column drawable slash IC menu delete. Ooh, uh, ooh, uh, uh. So it doesn't, it's a see now I have an error here. Remember, XML errors are harder to find, like you just see it here and then stops compiling everything, in, including your R file, right? So you got a, the only clue is what you get here on the uh, on the um, you didn't? Uh huh. What do you think is the problem? It's hard, super hard to find. Yeah, this is a, I mean, a, ultra hard to find, but see, I have an extra space. Like you had an extra enter yesterday, so be mindful of that. Uh, I don't see it. Uh huh, it's right there. Bam. And now I save it. It still shows here, so you may want to clean clean this, but saves it, everything compiles. Okay. So my menu is automatically now going to be there. Like, it doesn't do anything, but if I run it, my menu is absolutely going to be there. Um, so if I click on menu, there's delete, purge. It doesn't do anything, right? Right, so exactly. So the menu processing for status activity is done in the status activity itself, right? So status activity, and we should we have a method called under menu stuff called on options item selected. So whenever menu gets clicked, this gets called and passes the actual item. So we just have to add another case statement. So case r dot id dot item purge do something and then break and so what is that we're gonna do right so do we have a reference to our uh, yamba application here okay so i may as well create that as a to save me time from like typing the whole thing so i'm just gonna create here yamba yamba application yamba but, right, and then in on create, I'm just gonna create it. So I'll say yamba um, is, and then I have to cast it. 
Yamba application, and then get application. Actually, we need to double quotes, double parentheses there. So just you know, so it just makes it easier for me. So I'm not typing this whole long thing here, right? That's all. Because it's something that's readily available to us, so just kind of shortcut to make it easier for you for us to, to, uh, to do that. I should be consistent and move my uh, static my these guys up to the top. So now that I have Yamba, then processing the button, it becomes really easy. It's basically Yamba dot status data dot delete, delete, gone, Psh. right? Now I could do something uh, to tell the user that it was deleted, right? So I could actually do something like toast dot make text right this I need to come up with some text this is going to be toast dot length long dot show right and then text to be proper I should really oh now open up my values strings add another message right here where all my messages are so I'll do I'll do it manually string name equals and I'll say msg all data all data purged so all data has been purged something like that right and then back to my status data and as a oops not status data but status activity and then text becomes r dot string dot message all data first reformat reformat and just to test I'll give you guys then a chance to do it yourself but I just want to test it so I'm gonna go into my database first so SQLite 3 star so select star from statuses bam there's data right so now if I go here, menu, per, there's a menu item, click on purge. All data has been purged. And then I do select, select star from statuses. Gone. Woohoo! Was that hard? You just increase the value of your application from like 19 cents to like 23 cents. <laughs> right? And it took you only a couple of minutes. Right, because we now have the framework to to make it like a little easier, right? So again, just to kind of really quickly. So what we did is we simply added a new delete met function to our status data, which is readily available to the rest of the system, which simply just calls database dot delete, and then we added a new menu, just like we added three menus bef yesterday, yesterday the day before, right? And we then just handle that by calling Yamba status data delete. That's it. Okay, so I will help you out now. On create, on create options menu. But that hasn't changed in a while. Okay, but in the meantime, what I also want to test, I haven't tested if mine works, so I'm gonna say run service I'm gonna look at the log cat really quick okay that seems to work I can do a uh, cell now select star from statuses statuses again and it did work and uh, so that seems to have worked okay so mine works but so this was basically stuff from yesterday right that that was updating the service uh, that was uh, uh, inflating the menu
You guys good? Just so, just to again review. So what we did is, so we we moved, we got rid of our uh, DB helper. We moved it into a new class called Status Data. So Status Data now has all the DB helper stuff, right? There it is. Now it's private to Status Data. So Status Data now creates DB helper when it starts up, right? Um, and so it's readily available. And now Status Data provides nice packaged methods insert for content values uh, insert for status delete right so so it's really nice easy now to to use status data and these were basically doing the same work that we did before so if I want to insert content values I would need to open up the database for writing do the DB insert and then do close right so it's atomic so this happens all in one thing right um, so now this status data, we hung it off of the uh, Yamba application, right? So Yamba application now has a status data. And whenever Yamba application is created, it calls status data uh, this, right? One, one another thing that we could do is Yamba application also has a method called uh, terminate. So when your application is shut down, you can do something. This is just a, it'd be a nice thing to do. So what I would do is source override implement methods and I would say on terminate and I would provide an on terminate method to do something when we're done, right? Done. done with the application. So actually the system shuts down the app, removes the process and all that. So that is when you yeah, not when you leave a activity. Not when activity gets stopped. So the application has its own life cycle, right? So for example, in, in status um, activity, we have we do this to op to create it. The opposite of this would be to do to implement a public void close, right? That would undo what we did here. So I may say db db helper dot dot close for example to close any open database or anything like that okay so that's the opposite the flip side of a constructor would be a close right that would be a nice thing to do I'm being nice to the system so I'm being nice to the resources I'm It will, but um, the system will clean up the objects. But the way it cleans up the objects is by checking who doesn't have any reference to in being referenced by anything. So if you have an open database, then it's a little harder because it says, okay, this object is still maintaining the database. Maybe the database is maintaining the, the reference back to it. So you have this circular reference, and it just takes forever to like actually realize that that's subject. You know, so database networks things that are external to us. Uh, you kind of want to close them and so Yamba application is a good opportunity to do all that so status data dot dot close is now the opposite of status data this right so again we have on create the flip side is on terminate so whatever you do here you kind of want to undo here that sort of stuff right And so in the update service the Java, we simplified it dramatically by basically just saying Yamba status data insert. Right? And Yamba is basically just a short form for uh, it is. In, in Yeah. So yeah, so status data now has a close, which just closes whatever it opened, right? And then, see, here it's kind of like you have a constructor and the opposite is a close, as a quote-unquote destructor, right? And here you have the on create and the opposite would be on terminate. Yeah. It's working now because uh, the insert, I put a value in subside. 
Right, so that's why it was failing, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So now we're back at square one. We basically, what we did today is just refactor stuff a little bit. We made it a little simpler, but our goal was to kind of abstract the data stuff behind something called status data. So now there's something called status data, which is global to the object, which is readily available, and that now deals with this. Later on, status data is actually going to become this guy's content provider. But for now, just so you know, it's, you know, we kind of, just from Java standpoint, we wanted to isolate. So the rest of the system doesn't know anything about databases, which is a good design, right? Cool. Okay, so let's take a break now, and then uh, we are going to worry about timeline activity next.